Oh look, another lightweight mouse with holes in it. But how does a price tag of $60 sound? Well, regardless of a price point, it's hard to argue that lightweight gaming mice have been gaining popularity, and with good reason. Ducky, who has released plenty of mechanical keyboards, is now trying their hand at this sector as well. Let's see how they do. Now, I know this mouse was released a little bit ago, and there are plenty of reviews out there already, but I would like to also share my two cents on this entry from Ducky. So, if you've made it this far, thanks for choosing my review to watch or compare with others. Anyways, this is a 65 gram mouse with perforations in the sides. It's rocking a Pixar 3389 sensor and a choice of switches between the Omron 60MN Wano Blue or Kale GM8. The one I have here today is the Omron 60MN. The Ducky Feather has a total of seven buttons with two side profile buttons on either side since this is an ambidextrous mouse. There's also a lift off distance adjuster between low, default, and high, a DPI button, and polling rate adjuster. The reason for all these different controls on the mouse is because this is a plug and play mouse. So no need to download and install drivers and run software just to get it working properly, which I honestly love. All your functions are laid out in this quick start guide and use a combination of buttons to achieve certain functions. There's some RGB functionality included, which is located in the Ducky logo, which also illuminates the internal structure, and RGB is also found on the mouse wheel. And if you want to, you can turn off the LEDs altogether. Last thing to note in terms of functions and features is that Ducky includes an extra set of mouse feet of both types. The Pixar 3389 sensor is a fantastic sensor, so I'm not going to dive into that aspect. But let's look at the rest of the mouse for the performance. The liftoff distance button on the bottom works really well, with the low setting being incredibly low with only a few millimeters of height. I tend to leave it on its default setting since I like to use the liftoff distance for snaps and flicks. The sleeved cable is angled upwards, which is good to minimize drag. The sleeved cable is also insanely loose to the point you forget there's actually cable attached. My G Wolves Hottie HTM Stardust has a similar sleeve and I wouldn't purchase a mouse without it at this point, unless it's wireless. The stock pads glide nicely, as it should. The Omron switches sound and feel like an Omron switch, of course. They're insanely tactile and precise with actuation, with little to no pre-travel in the switch. This is what they sound like. The left and right buttons are detached from the shell, however there is a decent amount of rattle with just some slight taps on the shell as you can hear for yourself. On the flip side, there is little movement in the east and west direction thanks to the Omron switches. Unfortunately, the side buttons don't have the same amount of tactility and precision as those Omron switches. These are spongy and take more force to actuate than the left and right click buttons. Pressing and clicking the scroll wheel is fine and has better tactility than the side buttons, believe it or not. I do wish it had more steps in the scrolling to ease the effort of scrolling, but it does provide enough feedback through each step to not feel mushy. And the scroll button is nicely planted with little to no movement from side to side. Lastly, let's go over the shape and texture of the mouse. The overall height of the mouse is relatively low, and the top is pretty flat as well, much flatter than my HTM. So this profile would better suit a claw grip, unless you like having your hand flat on the desk with your mouse shape. The sides of the mouse curve in nicely while accompanied by a ridged texture on both sides, making it easy to lift the sides of the mouse either with your thumb or pinky. The shell is also slightly textured, which is great for sweaty hands, and the matte finish is also plus for that reason as well. And the left and right buttons have a concave shape which homes and contains your fingers pretty well. The ambidextrous shape is overall great and I believe is also very similar to the Zowie FK series of mice. It's light, it has a gray shape, plenty of functionality, it's plug and play, the LEDs look good, it's ambidextrous, the side buttons are a bit squishy, and the left and right buttons have some rattle, but overall, for $60, I would consider this mouse right where it's supposed to be for the price. Thanks for watching, and I'll catch you in the next one.